Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'll review EA Sports WRC, the successor of Dirt Rally 2, or is it? I'll start by telling you about the latest thing, the introduction of the EA kernel anti-cheat into the game. And after that I'll walk you through what this game has to offer. Disclaimer, I'm only a fan of sim racing and sims in general. I don't have the hundreds or thousands of hours into these types of games so you will not see pro driving or opinions about tire models or handling and whatnot i'm just the average gamer dad who likes cars this doesn't make my opinion less valid than any other fun knows no boundaries really and this is what it's all about by the end of this video you should know if this is a good game for you or not or at least I hope so. Let's start with the anti-cheat so we, we get that out of the way. Anti-cheat software is designed to prevent cheats from being used in video games. It detects and neutralizes various types of cheats such as lag switching, aimbots, wall hacks and scripting. Commonly, anti-cheat software scans a computer's memory and process for possible cheats and vulnerabilities. The keyword is kernel. But what the hell is a kernel, you might ask? No? The kernel is the core of your operating system and it runs at the lowest level possible. Essentially, it's a computer program and it has complete control over your system. When you turn on your computer, the kernel loads immediately after the bootloader. The kernel's code has its area in memory and it's protected from application programs. This means the kernel and the apps you have installed can work in parallel without interference or issues like a browser accessing kernel memory and changing how your operating system works altogether. Well, several game developers are forcing kernel level anti-cheat drivers. Apart from the usual anti-cheat client which is active while you play the game and scans what you have running on your computer, the kernel level driver we load during startup and block certain drivers from loading or running on your computer. So yeah, there are potential risks and problems of kernel level anti-cheat software. Everything sounds great in theory. These anti-cheat tools disable insecure drivers that can be exploited by cheaters. However, the biggest cause of concern is that the anti-cheat itself can turn out to be vulnerable. Another problem that may appear is that you won't be able to run certain programs on your computer. In particular, there are three highly popular games whose developers have decided on the kernel level measure. Two of them developed and published by Riot Games, League of Legends and Valorant. So yeah, there are legit concerns surrounding this. A kernel level anti-cheat tool going rogue headline would not be the first of its kind were something to happen to Riot's Vanguard or the Nuvo anti-cheat. The most popular third-party software are Easy Anti-Cheat, Punkbuster, Petalai, N-Protect, GameGuard, Syncode 3 and AQU8. Some developers opt for proprietary software like Riot's Vanguard, Activision's Ricochet, Electronic Arts' EA Anti-Cheat or Blizzard's Defense Matrix. <laughs> what fancy names, right? Others like Valve's VAC, Blizzard's Warden and 343 Industries aren't included because they don't operate on the kernel level. So those are the old school anti-cheats. There are hundreds of games that use kernel level anti-cheat software. So, yeah, hundreds. So no idea if EA is more or less trustworthy than any other company that does this, but the best course of action is to speak up and, of course, not buy their games, even if they don't have this at release. Because look at WRC, seven or eight months down the line they shove this in. And I think Steam Deck and Linux users won't be able to play the game anymore. So, <laughs> so yeah, and they don't even get a refund. Right. Well, that's pretty scummy if you ask me. So remember, hit them in the wallet if you want to see a change. Buying a game then making a fuss is a lost cause already. So yeah. So how can we know for sure that our privacy is safe with this software or any kernel level anti-cheat software for that matter? Having the highest level of access on your computers. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't. I link in the description two articles about this if you are interested. Now, let's move on with the review, shall we? I'll be honest, Codemasters being bought by EA was a sad day for me. I was pretty sure I will not play another great rally game from these developers. 
but was I wrong? Is EA Sports WRC the successor of Dirty Rally 2.0? The worthy successor? Let's find out. Starting with the menus, this game has a lot of options, making it highly customizable. You can fine tune your HUD assists and all the good stuff. Talking about the assists, this is not like the F1 game that just dropped. Review on that one incoming soon, by the way. Meaning, if you are a complete beginner, <laughs> you might get frustrated because the car doesn't drive itself in this game. Even if you crank all assists to the maximum. But who cares about that, right? After all, you reached this point of the video. <laughs> but they are uh, of a limited help. In clubs, you can organize private events and stuff, but I don't care about that as I need to log in into EA stuff. Championship is a traditional single player WRC experience, replicating the real world season. Choose a real world car and driver and take on a 2023 FIA World Rally Championship calendar in WRC, WRC2 and Junior WRC classes. Moments are the most memorable moments from the 50 year history of WRC, with Codemasters being given permission to use all of uh, WRC's archived footage. Every day a new moment will be available and show the player the real life or in-game example of a memorable moment that has happened in the 50 year history of the WRC. It's then a challenge for the player to recreate that moment in EA Sports WRC. If the player successfully completes the moment, they are awarded a medal based on their performance. Unlike the Dirt series, these challenges will not disappear and can be completed at any time. I like this. I haven't tried any of these in the game yet, but they seem pretty cool. In rally school, drivers will be able to choose from a number of basic driving lessons, earning medals based on how well they perform. Getting gold in all of the lessons will be key to getting on the way to become a champion. Additionally, each lesson can be driven on asphalt, gravel or snow allowing players to compete and get used to driving on different surfaces. This experience will come in handy given the game's many locations, seasons and surface types. Photo mode. A much requested feature by fans, photo mode is in EA Sports WRC and lets virtual photographers capture stunning images from around the world of rally. In addition to the standard camera features such as exposure, shutter speed, brightness, contrast and more, there's a suite of filters and frames to create pictures. Photo mode is accessible through the replays that are watchable after every stage, with players using their console or PC's built-in screenshot tools to export images. Now, with that out of the way, let's dive deeper into the wow. career. The game mode uh, most of you will probably spend most of the time. So you are presented with three choices The start by a guy <laughs> by a guy with a cool voice that doesn't have a matching face for some reason. Well, we're very glad you've agreed to join the team. That will annoy you for the rest of your career. <laughs> you are welcome. Yeah, I... Yeah, I chose Junior WRC because I like to start from the bottom in these games. After that, you start building your team, the name, colors and logo. Then you need to sign the contract for your next season. After that, you need a car, right? You can just purchase it or create one from scratch. So let's go to the builder now. The first choice to be made will be which class will be competing in, in this case, Junior WRC. With the class decided upon, the choice moves to the car's engine layout, which will affect its weight balance and driving characteristics. For example, a mid-engined car may have more potential but costs more to build and could be a little too challenging to drive if you're more used to, to front-engined machinery. This affects the cars the most from what I can see, as it changes the balance, thus your driving style. It doesn't matter if parts are used or not from what I can see, but I might be wrong here. Then it's on to the various mechanical components. Each part has its own traits and features. Some will be of higher quality, some allow for custom tuning, but budget considerations will also have to be made to reduce the overall cost of the car because you need to stay within the weekly budget. With the mechanical aspects of the car complete, the final step is to customize the appearance. Anyway, fun to mess around with this feature. Wish 
it would be more in depth, you know. After this, a shortest drive stage of 7.5 kilometers. <laughs> it will probably look like this if you are new to these kinds of games. After that, the career difficulty. I believe you can change that at any point anyway. I put the AI performance to 50 and it seems weird because I finish some stages 20 seconds or more ahead of the pack and get crushed in others. But most of the time I win. So perhaps for me a 70 setting would be more challenging. You can save scum in your career by the way with the restarts. I left it to the default of 5. I also left the hardcore damage to off because I crashed too much <laughs> in some stages so I would have to restart a lot more. Yeah. And I don't like that. But this is the beauty of these settings. It allows players to customize their experience to their needs. And it's pretty cool. In the calendar, you see the available events for the week. As far as I can see, you can take part in one of those each week. After you complete one, it automatically jumps you into the next week and so on. The first thing that annoys me is this. A benefactor target focuses on one of the other activities this week. So basically, you need to do what your benefactor wants. God damn it. So you need to keep those pricks happy all the time. I mean, you don't have to, but it's highly advised. Wink, wink. Would be cool if we could set up the number of events we can do each week in the career setup stage. I don't know. It, I, it's just an idea. So launch a full view it is then. As I load in, I get blinded by the glowy skybox from this stage, but I enjoyed driving this car quite a bit. This uh, 9072 Lancia has only 105 horsepower, but it's pretty light at 800 kilograms without the driver. So the naturally aspirated engine makes it seem stronger than it actually is. I'm pretty sure the force feedback settings in this stage was too strong, so I battle the wheel more than I drive the car. But it's pretty cool. I like how the gravel feels to be honest. I love that in Dirt Rally 2 also. Five right sharp of a crest to slight left, 90. Six right to the crest, slowing, 100. One right short. Time to move on. The next stage I drive during the night time, so I better not break my lights. I didn't, and won the event. The second thing that annoys me, and it's not really a bad thing for everyone, but I thought I should mention it. These events happen all the time. So my junior <laughs> WRC championship started in week five. First few weeks, I did all kinds of events. All were cool, like this one, not gonna complain too much. But the main reason I was here started after a good few hours of playing. So yeah, as I said, not really negative for most of you, probably. Not all events provide a car, like that Lancia Fulvia was. In some, you are required to buy a new car to be able to compete. So you need to stay within your weekly budget and event class, of course. This car was great, and so were the Chile stages I've raised during that event. Opens 40, 6 right, half long. At the end of the shakedown, I had to repair the car though, because it was pretty battered. So I chose to repair it because no idea if I have a service available between stages. I drove carefully, but still finished first somehow. The second stage of the Chile event was during the night. Pretty cool. I've somehow won. I'll not bore you with the rest of my career. Uh, I'll do a separate video if you want with that. Increase the pace a bit. Keep this pace. The next week I participated in a regularity rally event. This is just another way to enjoy driving in EA Sports WRC. 
an alternate form of competition present in several modes across the game. Unlike the stage rallying, regularity rallies do not require drivers to complete stages in the fastest time possible. Instead, the goal is to drive through routes at a specific average speed, with scoring based on how close the driver is to the goal. Co-drivers will detail the road ahead with unique pace notes compared to the stage railing, advising drivers on whether they are above or below the performance target. This is a great way to explore new rally stages while also rounding out skills in general. Basically, your co-driver tells you to pick up the pace or slow down so you reach your next checkpoint exactly when your timer reaches zero. It's pretty easy. Otherwise, you get penalty points. And who gets less penalty points wins, of course. So yeah, this is it with the game modes. To be honest, the game has plenty of locations and cars to keep you entertained for quite a while. Graphics are ranging from <laughs> bad to great, depending on the stage, lighting and lighting conditions and viewing angle. And of course, your graphical settings. Let me explain. While driving, everything looks mostly cool. If you have DLSS enabled, that is. If not, everything looked so washed out and blurry, for, for me at least. Now about my previous statement. The game tends to look like shit from certain replay cameras, especially during the night. I get it, the game has pretty big environments to render, but this shouldn't matter when you make your foliage shaders, am I right? The foliage in this game looks great from the driver's point of view most of the time, but from the opposing side it almost has some sort of emissive effect due to its translucency, I believe. Medium. No idea if this has to do with the mesh normals or just the shaders, but devs should always strive to make their game look good from all angles. I got some issues with iRacing 2 because of this exact reason. During the replays you can see bad stuff you, you shouldn't see, basically. And the road normal map is too noisy. Again, especially during the night when you watch a replay. There should be a mix of normal maps on the ground with varying noise sizes. At the moment this effect is very limited, almost non-existent. Perhaps it has to do with the track condition, so if you drive later into the stage you'll see more random details like different tire marks and puddles, I have no idea. Other than this, and the trees on the... <laughs> oh my god, the trees. I almost forgot about the trees. And the trees on the distant mountains which look like ass. And the in your face LODs that pop up all the time. The game looks pretty good. So yeah guys, please next time try harder when it comes to vegetation LODs. The damage on the cars looks pretty cool. Uh, it is cool to see parts of the car flapping around until they pop off. <laughs> you know, I can't speak about performance too much because yeah, I have good specs, uh, they are in the description of this video. So I have no idea, but I saw some people complaining about FPS in some of the stages. I got plenty of FPS, so that's an, somewhat of an indicator that the game runs on lower specs too. But take this with a grain of salt. Do some research on your video card if you don't have a 4K RTX or something. Sound is great, but too much reverb or echo in the replays. Again, I watched a lot of replays while making this video. So, yeah, what can I do? I think that effect is not that evident unless you are into the mountains, right? In real life, I mean. Ninety four right short forty slight left sixty three right short thirty two left eighty the in car sounds are great though especially the group B cars right, mm, my god controls are highly customizable I had some issues with my Moza R9 every time I enter the game I don't have any FFB like at all. I need to stop the wheel from the base and start it again while in game to fix it. I don't know why, but it works. Other than that, I got no problems. Everything works and it's pretty easy to set up. The in game shop, <laughs> yeah, th there is the usual battle pass, of course, but I don't even sh show it in this game. I, I don't give a shit about those. You should know by now. Difficulty of the game is very scalable, you saw my driving, right? But I'm by no means good at this and I use no assists. I'm pretty sure the AI can be tuned so 
it's challenging for you unless you are an alien or something so yeah conclusion so is this game worth it is it worth your hardened money <laughs> well buddy only you can answer that the only thing i can tell you i enjoy driving fake rally cars in it while i do my daily workout with a ffb to the max in one of the group b cars if these four next things uh, i will tell you don't bother you that much one you can at any time see loot boxes appear in this game <laughs> they can appear at any time the new anti-cheat invading your privacy or doing crazy things like preventing one of your drivers to work for example or who knows man who knows you can see your game being pulled out of steam at some point just to force you to buy the new game for example my f1 2019 game is gone from my steam i i just noticed i will not even make a fuss about it i don't give a shit but it's pretty scummy yay and yeah the fourth uh, thing i will mention it, the game is made by ea uh, this is everything i need to tell you forget code masters guys the shady stuff is now dictated by the ea overlords code is only work at that company now so yeah to close this long video yeah i think this game is a worthy successor of dirt rally 2 if you can get past the four above points Check out one of my iRacing videos if you are into cars. And know that the review of the new F1 game is coming soon. It will be the same as this one. A review from a casual player. As I am not a certified race driver so I don't know what's realistic or not in these kinds of games. I can only say if I had fun or not. Like this video to help me reach... Like this video if you... Like this video to help it... Like this video to help... Like this video to help you reach more people. Like this video to help me reach more people. And subscribe to my channel if you found, I don't know, some value into this. Also, drop a comment. I'm at the point where I can afford to answer every comment. <laughs> yeah, the perks of a small channel, right? And this is it from me. But until next time, take care of yourself and see ya.